broadcasting from various countries around the world using voice over IP technology, and in this case, FreeSwitch, this is VoIP Uncovered, a VoIP on Solutions UK podcast. I'm Kathleen Reed. Joining us today are the three founders of FreeSwitch, Anthony Minasale, Mike Jarris, and Brian West. FreeSwitch is billed as the world's first cross-platform, scalable, free, multi-protocol soft switch, and is certainly recently one of the most talked about. I'm excited to learn more about what's been going on in the community and to bring VoIPON's listeners up to speed with what's new at FreeSwitch. Thanks for joining us today, guys. For those of us like me who missed the last ClueCon, what are some of the major achievements of FreeSwitch in the last year or so? Well, one of the biggest ones that we announced during ClueCon was failure recovery. We added a feature to our zip endpoint to allow it to uh, use the core of free switch to store state data about the call, which could be shared over to another machine or on the same machine, used to resurrect the channels mid-call and uh, actually allow it to recover from a complete failure, such as like machine hardware failure or the software crashing and stuff like that. And then other than that, it's mostly the new book that we wrote that was a, about free switch 1.06, and we had that release uh, shortly before the conference. Okay. Anybody have anything else to add? Probably a thousand things, but bring them all to the top at once. (laughs) Okay, great. I think we've had some huge improvements as far as stability, uh, just, you know, as we've grown, as we've started building commercial products of our own on top of it. We've focused really hard and, you know, just ratcheting out stability in a lot more uh, things will just work automatically as opposed to, you know, having lots of extra config options. Recently, Digium announced Asterisk SCF. What will this mean for FreeSwitch? I don't really think there's much of an impact at this stage since it's a new announcement. Really, it's nice to see them broadening their horizons with additional products. Um, they've been kind of focusing on just their hardware and the uh, Asterix itself for a while, so they've come up with a new idea, which is admirable. And uh, it seems like uh, it has a pretty good chance of being a useful tool in the open source world, so we'll see what they do. So FreeSwitch has uh, long been known for its robustness and scalability. Why would someone choose FreeSwitch as a telephony platform for their organization now as opposed to Asterisk and the new Asterisk SCF? I don't really think that there's a actual competition going on between Asterisk SCF and FreeSwitch since uh, based on what I've learned from the announcement, it's used to interjoin several different locations and to try and provide fault tolerance by redirecting calls uh, when it notices something's down and whatnot, which is actually a complement to a software like FreeSwitch. They've already demonstrated that you would still use Asterix alongside it as the termination point for the calls and whatnot, and it would just be another tool that you could use. Uh, there's several different open source voice applications that are used together in the system, and we cooperate with all the other open source projects to uh, most of our users are are using all these different things together, so I'm sure it won't be any different. Is there anything else either of you would like to add, Brian, Mike? I think in general it's, it's a right tool for the job kind of uh, problem to solve. So free switch and Astros takes different approaches to things and tries to solve different problems. So like Tony said, they can complement each other well for different sorts of problems. Yeah, and I do think a lot of people do use FreeSwitch and Astros together. They they are complementing each other in, in multiple installs that our people in the community have. Yeah, that does seem reasonable. Um, so let's go to question four then. Businesses oftentimes see a large community and user base as a sign of stability in an open source project, as in a lot of people are using it, therefore bugs will be found quickly and it's more safe to use. So how are you guys growing the FreeSwitch community, and what can VoIPON listeners do to help? Well, I think the best way to grow the community is to just be inviting uh, and then convince the people who stick around to help um, foster in the new people. Um, We started with a community of about four people, (laughs) and after a year it had only grown to 60. Now we have thousands of users on our mailing list, and we probably don't even have a way to measure everybody that's using FreeSwitch right now. But... We have a very active mailing list, um, and we have a live chat in IRC, and we sort of use that as a uh, exit poll type thing, you know, where in an election you don't actually ask everybody, you just take a sample of a few things, and you can kind of use it to gauge the bigger numbers, and so we watch the ratio of how many people join our chat room going up, assuming that for every one person in there, there's probably some large number of several hundred people that don't go in there. 
to go along with it. So we watched that number go up. We've gone from like five people in our chat room to well over 230 on a daily basis. Um, we actually have surpassed or been equal to the number of people in the Asterix channel um, several times in the last couple of months. Asterix probably has a larger community than we do because they've had five years head start on us, but we were part of it originally. We learned uh, a lot about voice from there when we started our own. Uh, we sort of just took a new attitude towards it where we people would come in and we'd say, come on in. You know, If someone would ask for help, we'd say, we'll join our chat room, we'll help you. And we help people out in the open. And I think really just being inviting and, uh, and trying to help people when we can or, and trying to get other people to help people. So if we help someone, they in turn help the next guy who comes along with the same problem or helps us document. Um, that really helps to spread out the uh, huge amount of challenges we have. There's like an endless amount of stuff to do on a project like this. So the more the merrier. Wonderful. So, Mike, Brian, anything else to add on the community side of things? Sure. There's two major aspects to the community. There's the end user community, and there's also a developer community. And uh, for the end user community, the biggest thing has been, you know, trying to you know, help people as much as you can. You know, treat people with respect. Um, that's been a big help in engaging people. Um, the book has also helped with that a lot as far as engaging people who aren't necessarily online that we're interacting with daily. On the developer side, I think we've been really proactive is when we find somebody who's interested, who has the skill set, we've worked very closely with them. We've Because Free Switch is so modular, we've had people adopt modules or many people have written their own modules and given people easy access to be able to commit directly into the tree when they own something to engage them more ideas and sharing ideas. Just actively engaging people. As far as how can new people help, you know, if you're a user, by all means, download it, try it out, give us feedback on what's working for you and what's not. Um, for developers, um, if you have something, an interesting problem you want to solve, come on by and talk to us and help steer you in the right direction. Sounds great. And Brian, I think I heard you um, start to say something they've, there. They both covered pretty much everything I would have said, so Mike kind of caught everything I was going to go over. Wonderful, wonderful. Okay, and finally, what is the coolest feature of FreeSwitch in your opinion, and how does this relate to the future of the telephony space overall, or does it? I, I think one of the coolest features that was added recently was the, the deep machine stuff that Tony added for DTMF parsing. So you can map uh, digits to like transfer or other applications while you're still in a phone call. Like I could press star 500 and it would play a file or I could press start 500 and it would do something else. I think that's one of the neatest things that's been added. Um, I, don't, I don't think that really matters in, in the future of telephony space. It might, um, but I think it's a neat one. Excellent. So any other favorites that you want to add, guys, or should we just uh, wrap it up at that? <laughs> I think my favorite feature is a, a little bit less specific. It's that free switch offers you a toolbox for communications as a whole for um, easily building whatever you can imagine. Um, so instead of a specific feature, it's that you have so many possibilities of the way you, you can build things and we aim to make it very accessible to any way you're interacting with it. That As an overall feature, it's that you can build whatever you want and we've given you the tools to do so. The newest feature is always our favorite because every time we make something else. One of the, the last big one that I added was um, to use the FSK caller ID signal that's typically sent through an analog phone to go across a VoIP call, um, presumably going down into possibly across the PSTN so that if one free switch machine encounters another one um, with any amount of, uh, of other stuff in the middle, uh, it sends a small blurb through the audio path that will actually tell the, the, them that they can be reached over the Internet instead of through the PSTN, and they can uh, redirect the call on the fly, like, right to the Internet. That is really cool. So that's kind of, it's a, I'd call it an alpha feature at this point because I just threw it in the code tree and haven't documented or anything yet. But Excellent. It's Excellent. something we've talked about doing for a long time. Anthony Minnesoli, Mike Jarris, and Brian West are the founders of FreeSwitch. 
This has been a Voipon, Voipon Covered Podcast brought to you by Voipon Solutions. For more information, please visit www.voipon.co.uk. Thank <laughs> you.